Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. We need to first give ourselves permission to speak truth to power before we even raise issues with our outside constraints, I'll be gladly leading by example. The ABC of healthcare, primary healthcare, that's what we're talking about today, it refers to the essentials of healthcare that is based on scientifically sound and socially acceptable methods and technology. This makes universal healthcare accessible to all individuals and families in our communities. It promotes health and wellness. It's more about delivering healthcare services, and it's about creating conditions that will help people to become and stay healthy and well. It's all about extending the reach of healthcare to providers in our communities. So who are those providers? Now, we, we talk about people who commonly treat medical problems. This person could be a doctor, a primary healthcare provider could be a physician assistant, or a nurse practitioner, even a CHU. A CHU is a community healthcare extension worker. These are non-doctors or medically trained people that are trained to help in the primary health centers. Now, the PHC is not a jamboree at all. There are many real measurable outcomes, especially in the prevention of both communicable and non-communicable diseases, which we call NCDs. It's apparent that there isn't enough knowledge about the purpose of primary health care. And this is leading to abuse of the service and actually not enough use of the service. Where preventative measures could have been put in place, there's neglect leading to a more chronic situation down the line. As the saying goes, a stitch in time what saves nine. Today, my advocacy is therefore about the population, how they need to be informed, educated, and know the value of primary health care. On the other hand, the patients also need to be curious about the providers of their healthcare services. So we need to ask our doctors more questions about our treatment. Overall, for us to become a healthier people, we need to become more engaged with the systems already in place, starting with the primary healthcare systems in Nigeria. I agree with what you said, largely because um, a lot of times when we look at solutions, people are concerned about money, and they always argue that we don't have enough money. But you know, primary healthcare, from what I understand, and you can correct me, is more about, a lot of it has to do with prevention. And it's things you can do that won't cost too much more. You know, so telling you how to you know, live healthier lives and avoid maybe down the line high blood pressure or things that will cost you more in terms of costs. So I, I, I feel that a lot of it has to do with information and, and having a more informed populace. You know, and the bit I also like is, um, you know, a lot of times we treat doctors here as though they're gods. And, uh, you know, someone will give you a medication and you don't know what it is in a clear. And, you know, you find, why do patients not ask? You don't even know the name of mm. the medication. You don't even know what they're treating a lot yeah. of the time. So if you don't ask those questions of your doctors, and doctors, the same way we talk about politicians, doctors need to be held accountable. We're not a very, the society it doesn't feel very comfortable with holding people accountable, even when it has to do with your life. So that's you, something you know, I want to second. Um, another thing is that, um, actually, uh, primary health care here is um, not something that is well known. Maybe because of um, the history. We started with dispensary. And, we uh, and then okay. like we, pharmacies? we started with dispensaries mm -hmm. where you have a dispenser who takes drugs to the village to dispense for you know, sick ones. And then from there we had general hospitals mm -hmm. you know, at the local government headquarters. And then, you know, but they needed to be, you know, a stop, a gap to create, you know, like... Um, a handshake. Um, you, you need to create centers where, you know, you'll be able to treat or attend to the immediate needs, primarily, if, if you allow me to use that everyday word, 
just like primary school, the very basic foundation. Yeah. Yeah. And then before you begin to talk about even secondary, the secondary general hospitals and the rest. Mm. And, and so, with the introduction of primary health care, one would have expected that, you know, you have, it is where, like you have said, you, it's a, a place where you educate people on health hazards, what they need to know. Mm, family planning. day-to-day -day people. Mm. But unfortunately, the kind of head, primary health care that we have, these are places where in some places there are no medical personnel, where they are valuable, they are not paid, and even if they are paid, it doesn't come on time. And so you still find some of these same persons now creating uh, private hospitals within side by primary. side <laughs> within the primary oh health care. <laughs> And, and, and yes. because we also do not value lives here, there are no records of the challenges at that level. And so that if you have a record of all the challenges, you now know <laughs> which area to address. No, that's true. If it is in Anegbete, for example, it's okay, what is the prevalent? That's where you're from. You know? I, I think the records might be there, but not where we expect them to be. Exactly. Yeah. One of the problems <laughs> what do you mean with, with the yeah. center yeah. is that it is not particularly functional here. Mm -hmm. So someone who has malaria shows up in Luth for care. What, what has a tertiary education, uh, uh, healthcare okay. institution got to do with, got malaria. To do with malaria? malaria? The, the okay. problem okay. with that is you overboarding the next layers yes. of healthcare. Because the, same healthcare because the work functional one, the work. one, the basic one, mm. as opposed to attend to your need, is not working. Mm. The Health Act of the federal government of Nigeria was meant to help to address some of these issues. There was a huge focus on primary health care in that act. The act was meant to set aside 1% of the federal government's revenue in the consolidated revenue account for this particular purpose. And that act was passed, I think, in the last year of Jonathan. Up till now, one begin to doubt, because I still ask a couple <laughs> of people about the, some primary health care center that I knew. Are they working, working now? The problem is mm. you don't take a primary solution and give to a federal government to provide. Mm. <laughs> you need, has to be local. You're, you're trying you, to change government now. Mm. No, you no, need no, yeah, to. He's making no, a point. For, for you to people assess who are closer to the people. everyday the people, local government. Mm. you need the local government mm. to provide. I the government used to administer um, those dispensers. Yeah, but there. when you now say you create an act by the federal government, that the federal government will disburse the money, and then before it gets down to the local, <laughs> you know, everybody had taken out theirs. Yes. And so what is left is, left is next to nothing. Yes. Mm. So you need to actually allow the primary head care, yeah. local government, to run the primary health care, and then you can supervise from the state ministries and the federal ministry. That's yeah. the so that's what is the place my, the my biggest thing about this part, because it's about prevent, preventative measures, largely, really, more yeah. than largely, mm -hmm. right? And the busy yeah. So I really think it's more about awareness. We need to create awareness, um, because lots of people, like Ekene mentioned, they don't even ask questions from their doctors. Uh, I, we, you know, the, I had a cook that he would go to the doctor, just come back with drugs. They'll even give him sachets of, of medicine. He doesn't know what they are, so he'll give them to me. I have to do all the Google, the work, and say, it's for high blood pressure, this is for this. Now, also, it's important uh, for families as well, because when I think about what I do know, what I, because of my passion for medicines and you know healthcare and stuff like that i'm so grateful for the knowledge that i have because you know children are often sick and you're usually the first person that they come to so you kind of need to have that knowledge to, to, to have confidence and to handle the situation and um also i have to say the attitude that um the so-called healthcare personnel, personnel put out there is and enough to put people off i mean even Pregnant women about to deliver will testify hey, that me. the nurses stop calling me. Are I was in very evil. Yeah, yeah, very evil towards yeah. them. So, so yeah. why would anybody yeah. want to go and talk very to them? Thing. Exactly. Well, the truth so, is, overall, there are three levels of healthcare. Mm. There's the primary, the secondary, so and the tertiary. Mm. And actually, in most developed countries, you can't even walk to a hospital. You will not get seen. Yeah, you yeah. go You'll to be triaged and sent home. Mm -hmm. You need to go to your GP. Mm -hmm. That's Which in England. That's in Canada. Because, you know, that's their job. 
-hmm. and they, meet, they need to treat every, your everyday thing. So we need to make that work in this country. Yeah. A lot of 25-year-olds... Your GP is it's supposed 25 to 25-year-olds are wa walking about with blood pressures of 180 over yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. That's and so they will true. be dead by 40 years old. Oh, they don't realize that they even have hypertension. Mm -hmm. They just have a headache. They go and buy paracetamol. Mm -hmm. More paracetamol, they start having kidney problems. Oh, Self-medication is a big problem in this yes, country. So, it's a real so the primary health centers cycle. have a significant role to play. And it's not only by government. There's non-governmental yeah, yeah, yeah. playing this. NGOs. Yeah. And in fact, I have a, a colleague who's setting up in the Meta actually, a primary health center. And she's really trying her best to bring, you know, knowledge, knowledge which is power. You yeah. need to know. Start so awareness. In, in, in summary, I'm going to say that um, this was very, very empowering. Um, after the break, Ekene is going to talk about uh, empowering us by giving us permission to abstain from a certain popular pastime. Hmm, Ekene, what are you going to tell us? <laughs> <laughs>